Hello guys, got a video here for you today on recrowning a barrel and in this one what we're going to be doing is recrowning the Air Max Catran barrel. The barrel on this particular rifle is a CZ1 and unfortunately the crown is a little eccentric to the bore. Not by much, by around half a millimetre. The major problem with an eccentric crown is that it allows one side of the pellet, the side that is cut more deeply, to leave the rifling sooner than the rest and very well could influence the pellet as it leaves the barrel. So recrowning nice and concentric should hopefully improve the way the rifle shoots. First thing we're doing is setting it up in the forejaw, nice and simple, just tightening the highs and loosening the lows, getting it to around 10 microns. And then once we have it running nice and true, we move the indicator a little further in the bore and check the concentricity over two points. What this does is make sure the barrel is axially aligned with the lathe. In this particular case, the bore was eccentric to the outside, so not in the centre of the barrel itself, and we had to set it up using the forejaw, and we managed to get it nice and concentric, within about 10 microns, that's good enough for a crown. The other thing we've got there is just a piece of paper wrapped around the barrel to protect the bluing. Once we're happy we can begin machining. The first thing we're going to do is machine off the excess material. We're trying not to machine away any actual rifle in itself, so we're just machining away the overhang first of all. That's just using a roughing tool. Once we get it roughed down, we can finish it off using a finishing tool and we get a nice smooth finish there. From this angle, you can just about see the cotton bud that I've pushed in the bore to stop chips from working their way down it. Once we've got the excess material machined off, we can begin crowning the barrel. Now this is the way I do all my crowns now and it's proven to be quite good. I do just want to say this is a sub-12 rifle and in my experience we've done pretty much every single crown imaginable now onto a barrel and in my personal experience the actual shape of the crown itself matters very little for the accuracy. What matters most of all is that the crown allows the pellet to be let go at the end of the rifling nice and cleanly. As long as it doesn't drag or damage the pellet as the pellet leaves the barrel then the crown will be good regardless of shape. So to do my crowns now and as you can see there we grind a nice dish in it. The grinding wheel is set on the centre of the lathe and then the actual tool height or the height of the grinder itself is a bit above tool centre height. What this does is stop the wheel contacting both sides of the barrel itself. So it's only contacting one side of the barrel and the grind direction is upwards, so away from the bore. What that does is pull a burr up and away from the rifling. Now we could just leave the crown like such. A ground crown is very nice. It's a nice finish and looking at it carefully and closely with a loop, the end of the rifling is nice and clean. However, what I've found best, or what I've tended to do recently, is actually go in there with a 45 degree chamfer tool. Now this isn't a normal chamfer tool as it has been ground or honed by myself, so it's nice and sharp. And with the lathe running nice and slowly, what I normally do now is just gently feed the tool inwards. There's a little bit of a technique to this as you've got to keep the tool moving and cutting so that the tool doesn't dwell and chatter on the surface. And when we get to the depth that we require, we back out the tool nice and quickly. Next, once the crown has been cut, what we do then is use some scotch bright just to polish the surface and remove any micro burrs that may be present. I will say again that we have tried pretty much every crown imaginable. We've tried grinding crowns, cutting crowns, polishing crowns, everything you can imagine. I use the 45 tool in my case because in my experience it has provided a nice consistent finish. For powder burning rifles the actual shape of the crown may influence the bullet but I've found in sub 12 air rifles this is, isn't the case. So I do things my way and I'm very happy with the results. Right then and that was how we machine the crown on the end. So this barrel has been tested over the weekend nice and thoroughly. We made sure everything worked nice, but what I wanted to show you very briefly was the distribution of lead dust around the end of the barrel. So I don't know how well the camera's going to pick this up, we'll try and get in nice and close. And if you look carefully, the lead dust around the edge of the crown there is nice and even. We do see some prevailing lead directions, so we have a 12 o'clock and a 6 o'clock position here, but that just corresponds with the shroud. The shroud vents at both sides and allows the air to follow back around the barrel so that corresponds with that there. But if you look the 
distribution of lead dust is nice and even around the rest of the crown. And when we look using a loop, so this is a 20 times loop and the camera's not going to pick this up, but if we look in there we can see no major deposits of lead around the crown itself. That tells us that the pellet is being let go of the end of the barrel nice and cleanly. Now in my personal opinion, for sub-12 rifles, the actual shape of the crown makes very little difference to the accuracy of the rifle at all. The main purpose of the crown is to allow the pellet to leave the barrel nice and cleanly without any major dragging or damage done to the pellet. I have done tons of experiments with crowns, I've put pretty much every single crown you can think of on the end of the barrel, and in my experience they all, as long as they're good, produce similar results. But I wanted to show you that while the barrel was dirty. Now I just want to talk about some things you can do to test the crown and make sure it's not putting any damage or grabbing the pellet before it leaves the end. So the first and easiest way to test the crown is with a cotton bud. So, very simply, what we would do is to check the crown wasn't dragging. We just put the cotton bud in the end there and pull the cotton bud over the crown. Then, looking very carefully, preferably with a loop, what we'd do is look around the end there and see if there's any fluff or any sort of strands of cotton bud being pulled off by the crown itself. So, in my case, if we do that, then look with the loop. I can see no point in which the actual strands of lead or strands of cotton are being pulled off by the barrel. And that says to us that the crown itself doesn't have any major burrs or anything like that that are causing us problems with the pellet. The pellet is able to leave the barrel nice and cleanly without dragging. So the cotton bud test there is the easiest way to test that, but there is another way. So I'll bring you over to the vise and I'll show you what I do. Right then, what we're going to do next is actually push a pellet through it. So this is a 177 pellet and using a nice carbon fibre rod we're going to push the pellet out the end and feel for any grabbing from the choke and the crown itself. So putting a pellet into the lead and pushing it through, waiting for the pellet to show its head out the end of the barrel there. So once we get to about here, what we're going to do is proceed extra carefully and extra slowly. As the pellet head comes out there, what I was feeling for is any grabbing or any changes in needed pressure to push the pellet out the end. In this case there was none, so we're going to continue with the skirt. And the same thing with the skirt, nice and slowly, feeling the pellet actually come out the end of the barrel. So, we have our pellet there. And having a good look over the pallet there, there doesn't seem to be any damage from the actual crown itself. So if you look at the skirt, the rifling is nice and uniform. It is a little deep for my liking, this barrel is a little tight. However, it shoots rather well. And that's another method I use to test the crowns. Right then, so there's one final visual check on crowns that I normally do, and that is just holding up the barrel to a light and having a look down it. So I'm not going to be able to show you this method for the camera, but if we imagine a light source on this end of the barrel, such as a light bulb or something similar, if we were to look down it, if there were any damage or burrs on the crown itself, we'd be able to see them fairly easily by looking down the lead end of the barrel. That's normally a quick and easy method to tell if there's a burr on the end of the crown, and it also does give you a good idea of the health of the barrel as well. If you put a few hundred pellets through it, you can see where the lead's being deposited within the barrel and also any tight spots or anything like that. But that's another method that I just wanted to mention very, very quickly. The final thing I wanted to do is show you some before and after results of the crown in itself. Now, this is my testing. These four here were the ones before the recrown. These ones here are the after. We have the averages, as you can see there, I'd like to, you to ignore this group here, that wasn't me, someone actually started shooting my target. So, a little annoying, but there you go. And we also did get a few extreme flowers down the end here, before the recrown, which I'm going to remove from the testing. And hopefully from the results here, you can see the Catran shot very well before and after the recrown. We did get very, very slightly better groups after recrown in the barrel, and that was something I did observe just in general. There seem to be less flyers 
and of course both tests, so both these tests here were done at 50 yards indoors using unweighed and unsorted pellets, so pellets straight out the tin. Both tests were done using the same tin of pellets as well. Did that deliberately obviously to remove any possible deviations within pellet batches and it just makes the test a bit fairer. But at the top here we see the average edge to edge was 15.5 millimeters, so centre to centre that would be 11 mil centre to centre groups. Average groups after the recrown were 14.75 millimeters edge to edge or 10.25 millimeters centre to centre. So the groups after the recrown were 0.75 millimeters better than the ones before. And again, I put that squarely down to the sort of removal of the extreme flyers. So both tests were done as fairly as I could possibly do them. Both done at 50 yards, both done using the same pellets and both done sort of after a barrel clean. So the results here do indicate that the eccentric crown on the muzzle end was causing us a little bit of a problem. Although you could hardly say that before the recrown the barrel was putting pellets all over the place. So the final thing I'll just give you a good look at is the crown once it's been cleaned up. So I've removed all the lead dust there. It is quite shiny, the camera doesn't like focusing on it. But as you can see there, a quite nice finish. This is now how I do all my barrels. So we use the 45 degree countersink or chamfer tool on them. And in my opinion it produces a really nice finish. And as you saw from the groupings, really nice groupings as well. But that's going to about do it for this one guys. So thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.